Frazier. Your officials for this afternoon, judging at ringside, Chuck Hassett and Dr. Jin Kin. Your referee, man in charge, Marty Denkin. Your ringside positions, Dr. Michael DeLuca and Dr. Roger Thill. And timekeeper, cutting at the knockdowns, Cliff Goss. We're all set to go now. Your main event of the afternoon, 10 rounds or less, lightweight action. Out of the white corner, from Honolulu. and a half from uh, Jeff Timken. Gato Gonzalez with his partisan Mexican-American crowd. Unbeaten, he's created plenty of excitement. He's coming off a victory over the very respected Vilamar Fernandez. The referee with the instructions is Marty Denkin. Denkin will be scoring along with the judges Chuck Hassett and Dr. Jim Jin Kin. They are from Los Angeles. Gannigan from Waipahu, Hawaii. And very popular, of course, in Honolulu, where he has fought all of his professional fights but one, that one being here in Los Angeles, the reason being that they say that they just couldn't earn enough money coming over here to fight. This is a big purse for him, and he was happy to come and have this opportunity against the exciting young Mexican, Rodolfo Gato Gonzalez. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sean O'Grady. We are underway in round number one, scheduled for 10. Well, Gonzalez in red. Gonzalez in the red trunks uh, weighed in yesterday at 12 o'clock noon. He weighed 137. That was uh, one pound over the contract limit. He finally made the weight after uh, an hour of sweating. Uh, he made the weight of 135 and uh, a half. The contract went red for 136. But Gannigan the mistake, came right the mistake, in on it. The mistake was that there was two different contracts made. Well, that happens in boxing along with some other things. <laughs> but that should not for a uh, half of his performance today at all uh, because they weighed in so early. Tim, I'd like to say nobody should go to, re to the refrigerator while any of these rounds are on because any time one of these guys can nail the other one and we can have a lot of excitement. Gannigan told us that uh, he would not be coming out looking to take Gatto out in the first round, only if the opportunity were there, obviously, but that he wanted to see what Gatto was going to do. He expected Gonzalez to swarm after him. So far in the opening minute, that hasn't happened. They've been starting out like a pair of boxers. We doubt this will last very long in that respect. Gannigan, who uh, is leading with his uh, right, he is the southpaw. He's got a lion tattooed on his back. I've never seen that before. Andy Gannigan, a colorful performer, so popular in his home state of Hawaii. Filipino descent. Lives in the sugar plantation area on Oahu. Known as the Sugar Man, and he just landed a good left inside. Gonzalez will throw that punch. You just saw that right hand starting it near the floor. That's one of his favorite punches. Gil, he's a little bit like Aaron Fryer. He throws him from... Right, they faint one way and then the punch comes from another direction. The thing is, he's boxing a southpaw now. I don't know how many southpaws he's boxed. That may have some effect on his, on his performance today. Well, we're told he's fought three as a professional. Knocked them all out. A minute to go in round number one. Scheduled 10 round lightweight bout. Gannigan has got to try to be fast and uh, make Gatto miss those big punches. Gatto pulls his punches way back, and when he does, Gannigan's got to move. He can't stand there and let Gatto hit him on the chin. Gannigan indicated to Gonzalez that Gonzalez had hit him low, and then he fired one right back at him. The only blemish on Gonzalez's record is a technical draw. He stopped Herman Montez, and then after they looked at videotapes after the fight, they ruled he had been stopped by a low blow, so they called it a technical draw. 
Tim, they're both throwing bombs now, especially Gannigan. He was the guy that was going to take it easy in the first round. He's taking chances, throwing some big punches. Rudolfo Gonzalez has got the best lateral movement I've ever seen in a Mexican fighter. The lateral movement that I'm talking about is side to side. Final seconds, round one. Round number two of the scheduled 10 round lightweight bout. The number two rank, Gato Gonzalez in red. Andy Gannigan, number four rank by the WBA in gold. I thought Gannigan had a pretty good first round, Tim. He was maneuvering Gonzalez out of position and threw a couple of pretty good punches in there. Gil Clancy with WBA lightweight champion Sean O'Grady. Here at ringside, we are live from the Forum in Inglewood. Sean, is this where you wanted Gannigan to stay during the fight, stay outside like that and then try to move in quick and back out again? Gannigan is moving in much more than I thought he would. He, uh, I figured that uh, he would move more to the side. There was a uh, low blow referee, Marty Dinkin, tells uh, Dr. Gonzalez to keep him up. But uh, I figured that uh, uh, Gannigan would move much more. Instead, Gonzalez is the one moving. That's right. Gonzalez exactly. looks a little uh, uh, wondrous about uh, his opponent, Andrew Gannigan. Right. He seems to be respecting Gannigan at this stage of the game. Absolutely. Maybe he's having some problems with that uh, southpaw style of Gannigan. And he may have felt Gannigan's punch. You know, sometimes when you block a punch, you get hit with a solid punch. Gonzalez's best win so far have been against Vilmar Fernandez, his last outing, and a tough uh, Herman Montez. Gannigan with victories over Robert Vasquez. After he'd been knocked out by Vasquez, he came back to beat him, and a good win over Curtis Ramsey, former North American champion. Didn't fight for that title when he was supposed to, and it went to Sean O'Grady. He's since added the WBA World Crown to his laurels. He'll be with us next week, June 20th, for the WBC Lightweight Championship, Arguello and Watt. Minute to go, round number two. Left hand lead from Gannigan scored. Left hand counterpunch from Gannigan scored. And that seemed to rev up his motors. Good left hand by Gannigan. Rock Gonzalez in his corner. Gannigan has taken it to Gonzalez in this round, and you just saw Gato Gonzalez miss with the left hand, and the crowd roared even though he missed. So that's what kind of partisan crowd we have here in the uh, forum in the Inglewood. There's no question about that. <laughs> really no question about that. Less than 30 seconds to go. Round number two. I'm surprised that Gannigan is not using that left jab or that right jab more. A southpaw that jabs a lot is very hard to fight. Well, he's looking to wing that big punch, Sean. Round number three, Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sean O'Grady at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Gato Gonzalez in red, Andy Gannigan in gold. Gannigan, as we see it, had the best of the first couple of rounds. Gonzalez, so far, has not been the Tiger or the Super Cat, as he's known here, Super Gato in Los Angeles thus far. He's obviously showing some respect for Andy Gannigan, and properly so. Gannigan keeps waiting for that big punch, too. He may have been reading the uh, news articles here in Los Angeles. They uh, pumped him up very well as a big puncher. And he's sitting waiting for that big uh, left hand that's uh, his knockout punch. Gannigan looks like much more the, the cooler and the more experienced fighter right now. Gatto is really a little awkward and he wings his punches. Gatto is very excited, too. I noticed in the corner between rounds, Gonzalez's corner was very uh, excited, very hyped up about Gatto not being able to, to hit his opponent. And uh, the corner of Gannigan was very cool, calm, and uh, all ready to go. Gannigan is managed by Larry Ichinos, is trained by Albert Silva and Bay Sojat. Leonardo Garcia is the manager and trainer of Gato Gonzalez. And another low blow from Gonzalez. Like to alert our stations along the line. It'll be a 30-second station break at the end of this round. Down goes Gonzalez. A left hand from Gannigan sending Gonzalez to the canvas. He was up immediately, but it was a good shot from Gannigan. 
Mandatory eight count. And they're ready to go again. The first man to the canvas, Gonzalez, here in round three. That was a straight left hand by uh, Gannigan, and he landed it right on the button of uh, Gato Gonzalez. Gonzalez's feet are in the bucket, and down he went. Now Gonzalez comes back with a good right hand. Good right hand. It snapped back the head of Andy Gannigan. You know, when he landed that left hand, he pumped two left hands. The first one was a range finder, and right behind it, he came back with the big one. He's, he's maneuvering Gonzalez out of position right now. That's why he knocked him down. As you pointed out, Sean, his feet are out of position. Right, he's back on his heels goes. a little bit. That's why he went down. Right hand grazed again. Again, he just saw it at the last instant. He lands a left and another one. And a good right Big hand back right from hand. Gonzalez. Gonzalez rocked again again with a countering right. Under 30 seconds to go. Round three. This is the war everyone expected. Another low blow, and Gannigan looking to the referee in complaint. The one draw on Gonzalez's record was uh, acknowledged by the commission as a low blow. Good left hand from Gannigan to the chin of Gonzalez. Final second. And Gonzalez back. CBS Sports Saturday will continue after this word from your local station. Uh, you'll notice in the knockdown that Gannigan... He maneuvers Gonzalez right in, in front of him so he can hit him with that left hand. There's the one left hand, and there's the, the double left hand, and down he went. He just gets him out of position. The speed are even, and when you hit a guy when he's like that, down he goes. Round number four upcoming. There's Andy Gannigan from the island of Oahu in Hawaii. He scored a knockdown in round number three, so a bit of a surprise, certainly, to the partisan Gonzalez crowd, the way this fight has gone so far. There's blood in the uh, mouth of uh, Gato Gonzalez. His mouth is cut somewhere. The motion you can hear in the background when we return was for the appearance of Fernando Valenzuela, the Dodger pitching star, is in attendance, along with the usual number of celebrities at an L.A. sporting event. Elgin Baylor, and the Lakers star, actors Artie Johnson, comedian Scoey Mitchell, many others. Canigan in gold, Gonzalez in red. Up to this point, it's been Gannigan's ex experience that has proved the difference. He's fought a much better class of opposition than, than Gato Gonzalez has. And it's, it's proving right now. He looks very confident, too, and he, as he has right from the start. Well, my feeling now in this fight, I don't think that uh, Gonzalez can win by a decision. He's going to have to get Gannigan out of there. He's going to have to land that big bomb that everybody talks about. Down four. The other fight is just a little too smart for him. I'm surprised that neither man has jabbed because uh, the most effective in weapon in boxing is the left jab, or the jab. Uh, Gannigan's right jab and Gato Gonzalez's left jab. It sets up everything. It starts everything. It gets your opponent in position, and neither man has used it. That's oh, the champion. Sean, it's just not their style. They're, they're both wingers. They both have all that big, that, those big knockouts. 90% of their fights have ended in knockouts. Nobody, a lot of people didn't think this fight was going to go this far, and here we are, fourth round. Bill Clancy and Sean O'Grady ring oh, high. Another, low, another low, blow. low blow. That was very low. I'd like to alert our stations again along the line. There'll be a 30 second station break at the end of this fourth round. And Gannigan continues to take the fight to uh, Gato Gonzalez. Yes, he does. He, he, he's not backed up one step yet. <laughs> he's winging, but you know, when you're coming in like that, Sean, he better not get nailed coming in. Under a minute to go, round four. Gannigan wings his punches, and when he does, he pulls back. And there's a good left hand by Gannigan. Right Big over one. the top and landed right on the button. It rocked Gonzalez, but he kept his balance. But Gannigan pulling it on another good left hand from Gannigan. That southpaw style has really bothered the Gato Gonzalez. Gannigan's maneuvering him right out of, out of position for him to land the punch and for Gannigan to be in punching position. Well, we said Gonzalez had fought three southpaws in his young career, but of course, none of them in the class of Gannigan. It was earlier on against uh, far inferior opponents than Andy Gannigan. Beautiful move just then by Gannigan. He uh, slid to his right and then came over the top of uh, Gato's right left hand. CBS Sports Saturday will continue after this word from your local station. Get on the attack, Sean. Gannigan keeps using that uh, right jab, and then he came over the top with that left hand. He hits with it, and he turns that hand over, put just a little more power on it, and Gannigan ran right into it. Hit him right on the bridge of the uh, nose and then down on the chin. Gonzalez ran into it, the man, I know. 
in round number five coming up. We are live from the forum in Inglewood. Sean O'Grady, Gil Clancy, and Tim Ryan describing this, a fight that uh, many figured would not be into the fifth round so far. As we see it, it's been Gannigan in control, and he had the knockdown scored in round number three. The referee is Marty Denkin. And this is the fifth round. If Gonzalez, in my estimation, if Gonzalez is going to get something started, he's got to get something started here. Because I think uh, Gannigan is way ahead by this point. I feel the same way, Sean. There's a good left hook by Gato Gonzalez, and the crowd roars. You know, there were a lot of people suspected Gannigan's chin, but he's but he got hit a couple of good shots in this fight, and it hasn't seemed to bother him a bit. Very good shots, but now I notice that Gato is shortening up somewhat. He's got to shorten up because he's got to hit the other, the other man. He's got to hit his opponent. If you can't uh, hit your man, how can you knock him out? Gannigan with 29 knockouts in his 33 wins. He was stopped twice. There was Gannigan. He, he just maneuvered Gonzalez out of position again. Gannigan on the attack, scored the left hand. Left hand of the body. And Gonzalez gets out of his corner. Very good work in that corner by Gannigan. He blocked all of Gonzalez's punches and then came back with combinations of his own, landing that big uh, left hand many times. Well, Larry Itchy knows he told me that they brought the Gannigan here two weeks before the fight, which was a smart thing to do. They got him used to the climate out here, used to the people, and it's, it's showing. He really came to win. He didn't just come to collect a payday. Watching him in the gym, he was very relaxed and in terrific physical condition. That's clear. Gannigan, 28, 21-year-old Rodolfo Gonzalez. And again, a warning from the referee for the head work on the part of both fighters. Under a minute to go, round five. There was another lightweight champion by the name of Rudolfo Gonzalez from Mexico. In 1972, he won the title. El Gato, given that nickname by his Mexican fans back home, and then when he started to fight in L.A., it became Super Gato. A little American touch. That was more or less a slip. The crowd roared on that. Uh, Gonzalez threw a body punch, and it just... Uh, caught Gannigan off balance. Under 30 seconds to go, round five. These two sluggers unable to land the big one except for the knockdown blow from Gannigan in round three. And Gonzalez was up immediately. Final seconds of the fifth round here at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Well, number six, Andy Gannigan in the gold trucks. Gato Gonzalez in red, now on the right of your screen. Ranked number two by the WBC, number four by the WBA. Gannigan, number four by the WBA, number nine by the WBC. They are obviously two legitimate top teners, no matter who's ranking them. And right now, perhaps Gannigan surprising a lot of the boxing aficionados here in L.A. That was a beautiful move right there by Gannigan. He took a step back, slipped the right hand of Gonzalez, came back with a double left hand of his own. He's his had experience some good up, to, up, to, up to now. His experience is showing in this fight. Gonzalez is trying stuff that's different now. He's trying to he's trying to count the punch. That's exactly what Gannigan wants him to do too, because now uh, Gonzalez is waiting for Gannigan to throw a punch. Gannigan seems to want to turn it on with him. He, he's not afraid of throw punch for punch with him. Every time that Gonzalez lands a punch, Gato, or, uh, Gannigan looks at him and smiles, just grins at him. So he does want to win here. Good maneuver right there by Gannigan. Well, Gato's trying to throw that wide right hand to the body, and then he just put it back up to the head. Maybe he thinks that's the secret. He just can't figure Gannigan out up to this point. Bill Clancy with WBA lightweight champion Sean O'Grady and Tim Ryan ringside. We're in the sixth round of this 10-round lightweight bout. We have had a, a parade of outstanding young lightweights here on CBS in recent weeks. We saw Ray Mancini, Jose Luis Ramirez. You're going to be seeing them against each other upcoming. Next week, it'll be Alexis Arguello and Jim Watt for the WBC lightweight championship from London. Uh, Gato Gonzalez's left eye is beginning to close, Tim. He's got a nice mouse underneath the left eye. 
Under a minute to go, round six. Gannigan with a slight abrasion under his left eye, but not swelling at all like Gonzalez is. Got a knockdown being ruled by it. Gannigan looks like he's wobbled. It did not appear to be a big punch by Gonzalez. And they're throwing stuff into the ring already. Andy Gannigan looks very woozy. Well, he has 30 seconds. Hand. 30, 30 seconds, seconds hand. to survive. And Gannigan is just standing there. Gonzalez has stopped Andy Gannigan in a strange... Another counting oh, no, it's kill. a count, Tim. They're counting. Is he out or not? Tim, his gloves hit the ground. The referee ruled it a knockdown. That's all. Gangan's got to move. He can't stand there and get hit. He can't let the other man punch him because right now he's, he's out, out of it. it. He's got spaghetti legs. He is out of it. He's trying to move, but Gonzalez can sense Well, it. he only has three seconds, Tim. If he survives the bell, he may be okay. There's the bell. Andy Gannigan. And Gannigan just looked at Gonzalez and smiled. He did, but it was the strangest knockdown that I've seen in a long time. The one in the corner didn't look like a big punch. Tim, I didn't see the punch, but we mentioned earlier, punches are born. They can turn it around at any time, and that's just about what happened now. Absolutely. It was, sure. it was not a big punch. He did not pull back and swing it. It was a short, snapping-type punch. He shifted his weight onto his left foot. When he did, there it was. Bing. There it is, right there. The second one. Yep, it was. That's just, the one. He just kind of pushed, just pushed him, there. him down, but he was out on his feet. Two big shots from Gonzalez. This is after that first knockdown, and this looked like he was out totally. His gloves touched the canvas again, as you pointed out, Gil, and the referee Marty Denkin quickly in to make the count. I didn't think Anigan would survive that one, but the bell has kept him alive for round number seven. And finally, got to Gonzalez doing some damage. Gil. His, his eyes are still clouded, too. His eyes are still no clouded. No smelling salts was applied to the uh, nose of Gannigan. He's still hurt. Got to Gonzalez sensing the opportunity for the kill here is moving in, but Gannigan rallying somewhat and willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. A short punch was the damaging blow. You saw it on the replay. We did not see it live. Gonzalez right now winging. Landed a right hand. If Gannigan is going to stand in there and go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gonzalez, he's got to throw throw punches and get an attack to knock Gonzalez off of him. Gonzalez will just stand right there and throw punches with him. Gonzalez right now is coming like a freight train. He's overpowering him. Gannigan moving pretty well. He seems to have freshened up a little bit. Now he's knocked down. He was off balance. He was off balance, and he said to the referee, that wasn't a knockdown, but he is being counted. He took the right hand. It looked like their feet might have got tangled up. Gannigan appears to be okay. The third knockdown, official knockdown, scored by Gato Gonzalez. The right foot of Gannigan is uh, very close to the left foot of, uh, of uh, Gato Gonzalez. That's why they crossed feet. Good right. right hand by Gonzalez. Yeah, good right hand. And then a low blow from the left side. Gonzalez trying to finish Gannigan. We're in round seven of this slugfest. It had been all Gannigan through the first five rounds, and then suddenly a pair of knockdowns late in the sixth round by Gonzalez. A good right hand by Gatto. Another one. Gannigan is hurt again. Gonzalez throwing from all angles. Wild swinging right miss. to go round seven. Right uppercut landed from Gannigan. Not a whole lot on it. Now he scored with a good left hand. Hot Gonzalez coming in. Right hand from Gonzalez. Gonzalez is a little wild now. He should faint a little bit. Hit this guy with a combination. So he's just out. We're looking for that one big punch. And that's what Gannigan wants. Gannigan's got to make him be wild. He's got to make him expend some energy. When you punch hard, it makes you expend more energy than when you punch uh, easy. And now Gonzalez is expending energy. Energy. Less than 30 seconds to go, round seven. Good straight right hand by Gonzalez. He doesn't throw that very often. Final seconds of the seventh round. Round 
round number eight of this scheduled ten rounder. Gannigan in command through the first five. Gonzalez with knockdowns in round six and seven. And Andy Gannigan in the gold trunks will have to rally here a little bit. Keep himself going in this fight as Gonzalez appears to have turned it around. He is the aggressor, wailing away. You know, Tim, the way we have the fight scored, Gannigan has all those early rounds in the bank. And if he makes any kind of a showing in these last three rounds, we're going to have a very interesting time here with the decision. It sure did not figure to be a decision at all. It may not be yet. We're in round number eight. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, and WBA lightweight champion Sean O'Grady at ringside. Uh, Gannigan's eyes are clear now, Tim. He landed a couple of good snappy punches in, in that last exchange. Now in these later rounds, Gato Gonzalez will be able to land those big punches that he swung from left field because, uh-oh, uh there's a low blow by uh, Gato Gonzalez. And Dinkin warns him. He takes a point away. Looked around to each judge, and they took one point away. That could be the deciding point, Sean. Gannigan people expected the low blows from Gonzalez. It was a source of concern to them. Good choice by the referee, Marty Dinkin, because I have seen... Uh, uh, time after time, Gonzalez hit Gannigan low, and the referee hadn't seen it. Ten-point must system in effect, and he has taken one away in this round from Gonzalez. And now, warning to Gannigan for using his head inside. swinging low right hand from Gonzalez. Why well, Gonzalez comes in wide open when he throws that right hand. If he gets hit with a counter coming in, he's going down again. Goes that wide right hand to the body. Gannigan has rebounded from those knockdowns very, very well. He looks right eyed and in full control out there. Obviously, he's a little tired, but Gonzalez must be by now, too. They're in the eighth round. Right hand lead landed from El Gato. He hurt Gannigan again. He's Rock hurt against back. him. The left and the right and a long right hand. Gannigan retreating him, trying to counterpunch, and Gonzalez after him. He's hurt. Gannigan's either got to hold on now and try to regain his composure or get, a, get away away from Gato where he can't hit him. There's another right hand by Gato. That right hand that Gato swings is way from the outside. It comes looping around. That's where he gets his power. It picks up speed through that uh, through the air, winging around. Final seconds of the eighth round. <laughs> round number nine, scheduled for ten, and certainly neither uh, Gil nor Sean nor myself expected this to be into the ninth round. I don't think many fans here are boxing writers and various experts, but here we are, nine rounds in, as Gonzalez has been down in the third round. Gannigan has been down twice in the sixth, once in the seventh. A point was taken away for a low blow from Gonzalez in the eighth round, so that round probably was scored about even. There's a good left hand from Gannigan that rocked Gonzalez back, but he rallies immediately. We're in the ninth round. Between rounds, the handlers of Gallant Gannigan were rubbing his legs. Something may be cramping up in uh, the, the left leg of Gannigan. Yeah, I noticed that too, Sean. That could be very, very serious. And smelling salts was applied this time uh, to the nose of Gannigan, and he uh, looks very clear-eyed, bright-eyed. Gonzalez, who has knocked out 16 of his 17 opponents, Certainly has some frustration at this point against very tough Andy Gannigan, a knockout man himself, and here they are both on their feet nine rounds later. Now Gato's using that jab you were talking about, Sean. He hadn't used it all fight, but now he's using a jab. And it set up that right hand that he used right there. He fainted the jab. Good, right hand. Right hand. Good sweeping right to cut Gannigan on the chin. Gannigan smiled at him. I wouldn't smile if I got hit with a punch like that, I'll tell you that. Well, the Mexicans are supposed to have the macho, and uh, this Filipino from Hawaii, Andy Gannigan, showing he's got plenty, too. And there's a nick, a small nick under the uh, eye of uh, 
Got to Gonzalez. It's under the left eye. Problem.